We were recently asked to present this webinar at Harvard's Business School. It's about the final mile issues affecting the supply chain, not only in the appliance industry, but in home improvement in general. In other words, the final mile is the last broken link of a broken supply chain, including warehousing and the lack of skilled labor. This webinar also highlights the cumulative effect of the prices you now pay for home improvement products. So you learn what the problems are and possible solutions for your home improvement project if you're bold enough to start a project right now. So let's get started. Okay, this week we were, at, we were asked to um, present to a Harvard Business School the effect of um, supply chain problems on, on, on the local level. And it was really interesting to hear people talk about, you know, they had the, um, the poor people, economists, and everything else from the macro. It was really interesting to see how their problems ended up um, in the local level. So really what I was ta- what we were tasked with was talk about the final amount of problems, specifically warehousing and its effect on appliance prices, availability. And then we're going to talk a little about skilled uh, labor and some key takeaways. But I think you'll find it pretty interesting. And um, first thing, let's talk about uh, warehousing. And, and on the left, you can see an Amazon warehouse. And Amazon's been a big player in Boston and nationally, but certainly, you know, they bought Fall River uh, a decade ago and worked their way up the 495 belt. For those Bostonians, you know that they just bought the Revere Theater to blow it up from a warehouse. And a lot of other companies have become interested in warehousing as, a, as an investment, specifically banks and hedge funds. A lot of it is due to the fact that uh, e-commerce is, is uh, mushroomed uh, during the pandemic and final mile solutions have become very, very important. So let me give you an idea of what warehousing looks like at a local level. Um, now we bought two warehouses. We have roughly said we operate 75,000 square feet. We never had at least another hundred. So if you take a look at what we bought, uh, 4.7 million, the $3 million trans- $3 million transaction in 2011 and the $1.7 million transaction and you multiply that by three to get to the 225,000 square foot um, that we're buying in Norton. It's roughly, it's, it's uh, in, in real terms, it's um, 14.1 million. So it's gone up over three times in just about 10 years. Um, it's a three X. So for a lot of people who don't buy it, let's look at what the rental market is and the historic rent, the, the, it's 129% rent growth over the last 10 years. This year has been especially bad. It's, uh, it just in the first quarter went up 8.38%. So for people looking that were renting at $5.26 a square foot, it's now uh, $12.02 and, and now they're quoting $15 rents. And for that, you know, the small to medium type of business is going to get squeezed unless they can, unless they can pass the prices on to the consumer. Um, I think a lot of some of this is going to change because a lot of this is uh, low interest rates. I mean, we were borrowing at, at, at LIBOR we're about two percent, and that's gone away. And I think a lot of that, as the supply chain um, smooths out, because right now you get what you can get and you have to store it. Once you once the supply chain becomes more predictable, warehouse you'll, warehousing will be less, and um, I, I think the uh, the rents are going to start scaring investors away. And as well as the interest rates. But let's take a look and talk about prices. These are our most popular appliances we sold last year. Left's KitchenAid dishwasher. On the right is a, is a, uh, a GE front load washer. Average price, this is probably on the low side, it's 23 to 26% in two years. In fact, I made a list of the manufacturers that did not raise their prices at least twice from 2020 to 2022. That's your list. And I think this will change too. Because I think demand will, demand will soften because uh, during the pandemic, people were focused on home improvement because they couldn't travel, you know, spend money in their favorite restaurants. Now that, now that COVID's opened up a bit, at least for now, I think you see uh, less money going into, uh, into home improvement, more into uh, travel and uh, food and dining. Talking about the supply chain, let's talk about just-in-time inventory. How long does it take to get appliances? Um, I call it my cousin buys a house um, or appliance lead times. And 
my cousin, I love the guy. He's meticulous. And so when he bought his appliances in August, I made, speci I made specific notation to tell him not to call me in seven months because it's some of the appliances are going to take a year. So call me in seven months looking for it. And right on cue, about three weeks ago, end of March, he called me and said, the order needs the stuff. Now, to give you an idea of what that looks like, this is a picture of me. This is the way my cousin sees me because there's no way he's going to get a few of those appliances in a year. And it's interesting. It's been seven months and some of them still don't have ETAs on them. So you got to be very careful that the specialized appliances you buy will indeed become available. And, and I think this will change too, because um, in three to five years, the brands that you'll pick will change. Because right now the incumbents, some of the incumbents, Thermal and Mule, Sub-Zeros are, are taking six months to a year. These are some brands that you can get within two months. And some of them are brands that have very good, unique propos uh, sales propositions. SKS is the only sous vide. Fisher Bagel's got some unique styles. True makes an excellent kind of commercial style refrigerator. You know, the G cafes and G profiles um, have very good appliances as well. So I, I think the demand will soften and I think people will consider other brands because if you're looking for appliances in less than six months, you, you, you have much fewer options. Now, let's talk about skilled labor. Um, I teach high school uh, um, every Tuesday at Boston Latin Academy and I complimented them on the greatest labor strike in history. And, you know, Republicans and Democrats fight over the minimum wage, goes up 37 cents, and the both, both sides declare victory. Um, it, it, it's got to go up to $15 an hour, but, let me, but, but these kids are smart enough to understand they're not going to work for 15 when it costs them $20, $22 to live in places like Boston, New York, and, and perhaps San Francisco and Los Angeles. So, and, and, and the appliance side has become a lot worse because manufacturers do not pay what the true rate of repair is in warranty. So there's a lot of independent repair shops that have closed in the last 30 years. I've been in Yale anyway. So let me give you an idea uh, of how bad it's become. So I want to give you a little quiz. I gave, they went, they're Harvard people, so I had to give them a quiz. So who makes the most money? Average doctor, average lawyer, average appliance service tech. And I'll save you the guesswork and say the average appliance service tech makes more than the average doctor and the average lawyer. And they have no student debt because they get paid to train from day one. And really the only way around this is to focus on the trades. And, and, and like I said, not everybody, I know it was kind of, uh, uh, it, it was kind of shocking uh, to the Harvard people, not everybody needs to go to college and we have to focus on the trades. I went to Needham High and we had a very good automotive department, very good shop. We need to go back to Bowtech we need to pay fair wages because as anyone can attest to, even hiring plumbers, electricians, very hard to find, very expensive. So if there's more of them, the, the, the supply will be more consistent. You won't have those problems. Really, my, my, my takeaway is warehousing will be, a, will be an issue, but prices will stabilize. Market share brands will change dramatically over the last three to five years. But I really, the, the, the word that I heard, whether you're talking about a port, an infrastructure, you know, they talked about autonomous vehicles to help with trucking. It's really investing. Um, I might probably get invest in the trades, uh, but at least start with fair wages and training, um, especially on, 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 um, on the higher luxury brands. But certainly we need to, we need to invest in our, our infrastructure um, for the supply chain issues to go away, or at least abate somewhat before the next time. And that was the end of the, uh, the presentation as far as uh, how the supply chain is from a local standpoint. Uh, but if you're in the market to buy appliances, certainly give yourself up to a year. So you might want to buy them, you know, when you, when you start in the planning, not when you're finishing with the cabinets. That's it. Thank you.